Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 21, Brandon Jacobs Jenkins. Since his debut in the early 2010s, Brandon Jacobs Jenkins has rapidly become one of the brightest stars of American drama. Still only in his mid-30s, He's already been nominated for and or won several of the most prestigious prizes in the theater world, despite the fact that nearly all of his work to date has been produced away from the glittering lights of Broadway. He staged seven full-length plays since Neighbors in 2010, most of which have been dark satirical comedies that comment on the absurd effects of prevailing attitudes about race and class in American society. His plays also frequently require self-aware stagings that break the so-called fourth wall between the stage and the audience. In doing so, they force viewers to engage their minds more actively in interpreting the performance, since the audience basically becomes a part of the play, whether they expect it or not. Many of his works also update older plays, usually revealing the outdated and prejudicial ways of thinking that inform such dramatic ancestors. Now let's watch a clip of Jacobs Jenkins' satirical workplace comedy, Gloria, being performed by actors from the Goodman Theater in Chicago. If you're a fan of the movie Office Space, or of the television show The Office, you'll certainly see some familiar themes here, though they're handled in a very different manner. It's just what happens when you stay in this hideous place for too long. It could happen to any of us. Really, Kendra? The intern is right there. He's wearing his headphones. And I hope you're paying attention, Ani. I know your whole thing is like, oh, I'm so pretty. I'm a pretty nerd. I graduated college a year early with like a neuroscience degree and was going to go clone like baby brains, but accidentally wound up in magazines because I know computer and science stuff. But if this doesn't work out, I can always just go to like brain school or computer school or wherever pretty nerds go. But you better start figuring your shit out. Get a five-year plan. Because if you don't, you're going to wake up one day and this interesting thing you thought you were going to do after college is actually your career. And you have to live with it. Ew. For example, this cautionary tale. Excuse me? Don't you hold the title for the longest living assistant on edit row? No, Daisy's been here the longest. Daisy doesn't count. She's the assistant to the editor-in-chief, which is basically an associate editor. And I said longest living. Aren't you turning 30 any day now? I will die before I turn 30 in a cubicle. Let me know how I can help you with that. And Daisy is not an associate editor. First of all, She ghost edits all the writers Michael doesn't want. Second of all, if you're in a cubicle, you're an assistant. Okay, Dean, believe what you need to believe. What's your five-year plan, Kendra? What do you mean? You're 27, that gives you only three years. Um, I'm clearly making healthy strides towards an exit. With what? Your fake Twitter accounts or your fashion tumblers? Eat me. At least I'm getting my name out there. I guess I should be on the drunk Uncle Dean plan. Getting wasted every night and continue waiting around here for a promotion that's never going to happen? Kendra, do some work. If you had half a brain, you'd look around and see everyone in charge here is pushing 60. Or just past it. And they're not going anywhere. They're certainly not thinking about you. For more information about Jacobs Jenkins, follow the link at the top of this page to an interview published on the Vineyard Theater's website. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.